Hi guys, in today's lesson we're going to look at architectural model making, a very basic introduction but using some really simple uh, found household items like a pizza box and a little bit of plastic from some packaging um, and some stuff we find in the garden. We're going to make an architectural model uh, and look at elevations and designs that architects would use to produce buildings as well as looking a little bit at scale and how scale is used for drawings to calculate dimensions for builders and architects. Cheers! Okay, so we're looking at architectural model making. Um, an architect, when they present their plans to a uh, builder or a model maker to make the first model, the main thing that we need to work from is the elevation drawings. The elevation drawings are the views of the building from different sides, so quite similar to an orthographic drawing in many ways. Um, I'm going to do a little um, version of the workshop that I'm currently working in as my idea because I thought actually that could work quite well. I mean, it's, it's essentially going to look a bit like a little model shed, but it will have all the same principles. If you've got a printer, you could search elevations, architects' elevations, find the design, print it off, and cut those out and literally work straight from the elevations for the model. Um, I don't have a printer, unfortunately, at the moment, so I'm going to be drawing out my elevations by hand, uh, and then I'm going to take a photo of them to make sure I've got them saved. Uh, if this was a project, they'd be an important part of my work, and then I'm going to cut them out and use them as the basis for building my simple architectural model. Okay, so I've uh, completed my elevations. Um, something I need to talk about that's quite important with this is that I've drawn them to scale. So drawing something to scale means that the units on the page can be converted through one very simple multiplication to get the real size of the product. So if you're making models in uh, SketchUp, you can draw them to one-to-one -one scale and take real dimensions for them. If I was to draw this to scale, this is five meters across, um, that would be scale of one to one, which for this is not viable because of the size of the paper that would be required. But for a small scale item like a phone holder, it could be drawn at one to one scale. If it's getting a bit larger, you could draw it at one to two scale, which means each unit on the page would need to be multiplied by two to get the final size. My unit here is one to 50. So one to 100 would be one centimeter equals a meter in real life, which is a standard uh, unit to use for architectural drawings but my model and drawings would have ended up being very small because it's a small building. So here you can see for example 100 mil length there times by 50, 5,000 that means it's five meters across and that is true for all aspects on here so if I was then to convert these into plans for a real building that I was making I could measure the doorway and see the width on here is 40 so 40 times 50 is 2,000, so I know my door width and my joist need to be two meters across. A couple of other features that you will see here are that I have drawn some context on here. So the slight context I've got that differs from an orthographic drawing is you will see the pitch of the land. So a surveyor, if you were designing a real building, would come and measure the pitch of your land or the position of your land, and that information would be used by the architect. I know that I built this workshop on quite a severe slope, but I leveled off a small section first. Behind, there's a hill, below there's a hill, but then I have my substructure and my deck at the front. I've just shown that on one of the pictures to give you an indication of how it would actually be drawn. And if you search architectural elevation, you'll find more examples of that. And I've done some indications of detail. This is a, a timber building, so you can see the panels on there, but I'm gonna apply those to the model. So I didn't do it on all aspects of it. I'm now gonna take a photo of these, uh, if you were at school, you could use a scanner and scan them in. Um, and now I'm actually literally going to cut these out and apply them to some card. The card I'm using, because I know that materials can be limited at home, is a pizza box, complete with a little bit of grease. So I'm going to find a nice clean bit of that. You will see I will only need one, two, three, four pieces of card, but I will also need a piece to represent the roof, which is interesting on this drawing because you can see you've got a pitch clearly from the sides, but the front views 
can be slightly misleading when you look at the front view. That's why it's so important to have all the views of the building. I've included both the side views. You may have differences. You might have windows in the side. And this one actually does have a window in the side on the east. So I'm going to add the window in uh, when I make the model. So I'm now going to cut these out, apply them to the card, and uh, then start trimming them down to start my model. So as you hopefully saw from the time lapse, what I've done is I've cut out each piece. Um, I drew round some of the pieces, cut them out, so that I wouldn't stick them on because I didn't want to apply this finish. It's a wooden building, so I thought it would look quite nice in the natural card finish. Um, then, because I was going to draw the lines on, what I've done is I decided to tape them in a line at the back. My preferred adhesive to use would be something like Yoohoo, but I don't actually have a multi-purpose glue like Yoohoo, so I'm actually going to have to use sellotape, but I'm going to make sure it's all concealed on the inside. So I thought if I tape it, that will allow me to draw a line that runs perfectly around the outside edge. So it will just add that little level of detail and intricacy that's going to make the model look really nice. You'll notice I drew on the window and the door frames first um, so that I could draw the lines through. Because even on the drawing it was quite a fiddle having to um, draw in between. So I'm going to cut out my windows now. I'm going to use a little piece of plastic that I've gotten from uh, an Easter egg box. Um, and I'm going to fix some windows behind the holes. Uh, and then attach my roof. So by the end of this short time lapse, I should have the assembled basic building. Okay, so here's my basic uh, 1 to 50 scale model of the workshop. Um, it's just literally those pieces of carpet together, piece of plastic in. Now, that would be enough if you're making a basic architectural model just to test out an idea, or perhaps to use as a context model, so an example that goes around something else. But I'm going to add a few more details uh, just to make it a little bit more fun and interesting as a project idea. Like So I finished my model. As you can see, I got somewhat carried away messing around with uh, little contextual things like trees and the deck and some contouring. I also added some small window frames just made out of paper um, on there, you can see. Uh, I used a bit of felt I had lying around for the roof, but actually it's a bit thick and it messes up the scale of the design. So if I were to make it again, I think I would change that. But generally, I'm pretty happy with that. And it is an accurate representation of what the workshop looks like. Uh, so yeah, there's my video on architectural model making. I'd love to see what you produce yourselves. Uh, cheers.